For this project, I'm going to be using some green and yellow yarn that I have lying around. These are a size 4. I'm also going to be using a 5mm hook and a yarn needle is optional. First off, we'll need a magic ring. And to make a magic ring, wrap the yarn around two fingers with the tail end at the bottom. Use your hook, go under and over and pull that piece of yarn through. Pull your fingers out, but don't pull the knot tight. And then you want to chain two. To chain, yarn over and pull through. And then we're going to do 10 double crochets. So yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So that's your first double crochet. And again, to double crochet, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now we'll do eight more of these. Okay, and I'm almost done with my 10 double crochets. And to count these, just count these little posts or the little V's along the outside. Make sure not to count the chain two that you did in the very beginning. Now just pull on the loose end to close off the hole. Now we're going to slip stitch to the very first double crochet that we made. So you want to skip the chain two and then insert your hook into that top stitch. So it should be to the right of the very first double crochet that you made. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, and then pull through again. And then you want to pull it tight to make sure the seam is less visible. And then chain two and we're going to start the second round. The very first double crochet should go into that same stitch that you just slip stitched into. For this round, we are going to be doing increases all around, which means we'll be doing two double crochets into every single stitch in this round. So I've just done one double crochet into the first stitch and I'm gonna go back in and do a second one. And then we're going to move on to the next stitch and do two into that one. And just continue this all the way around until you get to the very end. You should end this round with an increase or two double crochets into the last stitch. And the slip stitch that you made in the last round looks like a stitch, but do not double crochet into there. This round should have a total of 20 stitches. Now we're going to slip stitch and then again to slip stitch, you want to insert your hook into the stitch of the very first double crochet that we made this round. So skip the chain two that we did earlier, insert your hook into that stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then pull through again, and pull it tight. Now we're going to chain two and start the third round. In the third round, we're going to do one double crochet into the first stitch, Remember to go into that same stitch that we slip stitched into. And the second stitch will be an increase. So two double crochets into one stitch. Next we'll do one and then two and just continue this pattern all the way around. In all of the rounds that we increase, we should end the round with an increase in the very last stitch. Now we're going to slip stitch and start round number four. This round will be two double crochets and then an increase. So the first stitch will have one, second stitch will have one, third stitch will have two. And for the fifth round, it'll be three double crochets and then an increase. Round six is four and then an increase. And you can kind of see the pattern. Round seven will be five and then an increase. And the size of this circle should be the diameter of your head. So if you need to, you can add one more row of increases or do one less row. But it is stretchy, so don't worry too much about the size of this circle. As you can see, it's about 6 inches for the diameter or 16 centimeters. Next, we'll start row 8. So we're going to slip stitch, chain 2, and just do one double crochet into every single stitch in this round. So no increases for this round. 
We are at round number nine and we are going to start the diamond stitch. So chain one and then you want to yarn over twice. We're going to count three double crochets from row seven. So we're not counting the chains that are directly under our hook. And we're going to go behind the post of the third double crochet. And then yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two again, and yarn over, pull through two. And this is called the treble crochet. Next, we're going to skip the next stitch and do a single crochet into the second one. So insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through the two on your hook. And then we're going to do that two more times for a total of three single crochets. Once you finish three single crochets, we're going to yarn over twice and then insert our hook back into that same double crochet that we worked behind. And then we're going to yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and we're not going to yarn over, pull through again because we're going to work into the other side. We're going to yarn over twice, skip three stitches into the fourth. We're going to go behind the double crochet. And then yarn over, pull through. And here you should have a total of five loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two again, and then yarn over, pull through three. And this is called the treble crochet two together. So this next part, you want to skip one and then single crochet three again. And now you want to do another treble crochet two together. The entire rest of the round will be treble crochet two together until you get to the very last stitch which is just a treble crochet. And here I've just worked all the way around doing the same exact thing. When you get to your very last stitch you want to complete the treble crochet behind that last double crochet that you worked behind. And instead of doing a treble crochet two together, we're just going to do a single treble crochet. And then slip stitch into that first treble crochet that we made. And you should be finished with your first diamond stitch row. So it should start to look like just a bunch of upside down V's all around the outside. Round 10 is going to be one double crochet into every single stitch all around. And once you finish, we're going to be working on the diamond stitch for this round again. But this time, instead of starting with a treble crochet, you're going to start with three single crochets. So it's sort of like an alternating pattern where this time we start with three single crochets, but the next time you'll start with the treble crochet. So chain one and do three single crochets. And then start your treble crochet two together. And we'll be working behind the right side of the tip of the V that we made two rounds before. And then we'll also be working behind the tip on the other side. And just continue treble crochet two together all around. And your very last stitch should also be a treble crochet two together. Once you finish that stitch, you can slip stitch and move on to the next round. 
Round 12 is going to be one double crochet in every stitch around again. And then you want to continue this alternating pattern of just regular double crochets and then a diamond stitch, regular double crochets, and then diamond stitch. I personally did six rows of the diamond stitch, but you can make this longer or shorter if you like. Once you're finished with this part, we can work on the brim. Since I want the brim to be opening out instead of just going straight down, I'm going to increase for this round. I'm going to be doing one double crochet and then one increase all the way around. If you want the brim to be wavier, then you'd add more increases, but if you want it to be less, then you'd add less. After doing this round of increases, the next two rounds will be just regular double crochets all the way around, just one in every stitch. And for this part, you can also add more rounds if you want the brim to be longer or less rounds if you want it to be shorter. So I ended up doing three total rounds for my brim. The first one being the increasing round and then two regular one double crochet in every stitch. Once you finish your brim, you can slip stitch, chain one, and then cut your yarn a couple of inches. Now we'll be working on the stem. So hold your yarn like this and similar to making the magic ring, we're going to wrap the yarn like this. Go under, over, and pull it through. But this time we're going to pull the knot tight. And we're going to do four chains. So I'm making the leaves really small, but if you want them to be longer, then you would chain more, but do the same thing. In the second chain from the hook, we're going to insert our hook into that chain and then complete a single crochet and do that two more times for three total single crochets. Once we complete the three single crochets, we're going to chain four again. And working into the second chain from the hook, we're going to do three single crochets into every chain. And now we'll do it once more, chain four, work three single crochets into these chains and then we're going to slip stitch into the very first chain that we made so we're going back to the first leaf and we're just going to slip stitch into there if you want more leaves, then just continue chaining four and single crocheting, but at the very end, slip stitch the leaves closed. So after you've slip stitched, chain one and then cut the yarn, but make sure it's long enough for you to attach the leaves to the hat. First, I'm just going to pull the loose ends through the middle of the leaves. Next, I'm going to go into the hat with my hook and poke it through the center of the top. Then just grab the loose ends and pull it through into the inside of the hat. You can tie the two green strands with the yellow strand right at the center of our magic circle. Now we're going to secure the leaves by grabbing our yarn needle and tying it into a knot with one of our stitches. If you don't have a yarn needle, you can also do this with your crochet hook. So I'm just going to loop the green yarn all around the center. And to make sure it's super secure, I'm going to turn around and then work back over that yarn that I just weaved through. Make sure to skip a loop so you don't pull your yarn all the way back out. For this part, I'm also going back and forth trying to make sure that the green yarn does not peek through from the outside. Once I'm done attaching the leaves, I'm going to go and weave in the rest of my loose ends. So 
So I'm going to go in one direction underneath the stitches that I made. And then I'm going to turn around and go back under that same line. And when you're done, your hat should look something like this. And that is all for this video. Please leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe for more of these tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.